Hi. Hi. Oh, oh, what happened there? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is September 10, Tuesday today. Okay, the gospel is from St. Luke, chapter 6, verses 12 to 19. We have a change of venue. Well, what's going on? Okay. The gospel for today. <clears throat> so we'll read the first part of the gospel. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray. And he spent the night in prayer to God. When day came, he called his disciples to himself. And from them, he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. And then... This gospel continues to enumerate who they were. Simon, whom he named Peter and his brother Andrew. James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus. Simon, who was called Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. And Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. And then there's the second part of the gospel where... Uh, we are told that Jesus went to Tyre and Sidon to preach and to cure diseases of people. But I want us to focus today on the first part. Jesus departed to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. Jesus, the Son of God, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, himself, God, spends the whole night praying to his Father, God. What do you think does that mean for all of us? And it's not the first time that we see Jesus in prayer. Uh, some other accounts of the gospel would would show Jesus also going up to the mountain to pray for other purposes um, or would be by the sea of Galilee right, praying or in the desert where he spent 40 days before his public ministry. Jesus was constantly praying and um, we are told of those incidences in the gospel where Jesus went out to pray prior to embarking on some big task or big project right like when he began his public ministry yeah he was out there in the desert for 40 days praying when he uh, chose his disciples like in this gospel we are told he spent the whole night praying so jesus shows us the example of what prayer can do for us and and how important spending time in prayer is especially like in this case when he was about to get involved in something that is big in a big task a big project um, a big decision he has to make like in the agony in the garden for example right that's another example of a time when Jesus was uh, shown uh, praying very intensely to the point of even sweating blood so Jesus prayed and he prayed a lot he prayed a lot he communicated with his Father God. Right? Because what's the definition of prayer? By the Catechism? What is prayer? Uh-oh. Any volunteer? Any volunteer? What's the definition of prayer? Huh? Something very basic in the Catechism. Yes, Sophia? Lifting up our soul and mind. Okay, the lifting up of our hearts and minds to God. Okay, 
That is the definition of prayer. Lifting up of our hearts and minds to God. So that even Jesus, who is already God himself, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, finds it necessary to communicate, to lift up his heart and his mind to his Father God. Communication is a basic need of everybody. Okay? Uh, nobody in this world can survive normally, sanely, without communicating with others. Without expressing one's sentiments, one's thoughts, one's feelings to another rational human being. It is part of our nature to communicate. And so that is why anybody who does not like communicating with other people <laughs> uh, or abhors situations where they need to be with others and communicate with others, uh, there's something terribly wrong about that person or about that kind of an attitude because it's part of human nature to communicate. And our Lord here shows us that yeah we need to communicate with our father god in prayer although god knows what you ask what you need to ask him even before you do ask him he still wants to hear us out he still wants us to express it to him and there is a very important reason for that because number one it shows our humility. It shows that we are recognizing our dependence on God. Number two, it shows our real eagerness and our real desire for those things that we pray about and we pray for. Okay? And number three, it is a form of purification for our souls when we pray. And when we engage in prayer, uh, especially especially the prayer which is called mental prayer. Mental prayer is that kind of prayer which is a more personal kind of communication with God, where you don't use where you don't use the 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 formulas of the vocal prayer, but you use your own words. You lift up your own thoughts and your own heart to God in prayer that is the kind of prayer that our Lord showed us here in this example where he spent the whole night praying to God so prayer is a very important habit uh, uh, for our for our uh, for our faith for our sanity even I dare to say okay? And for the growth of our soul, we need to communicate with God. That is how relationships are built, right? That is how relationships are built. You cannot make friends with people unless you communicate with them. And it all begins with a simple hi or a handshake and spend a few minutes with, with people. That is how you make friends. Well, how are we going to be friends with God? How are we going to claim that we love God? How are we even going to fall in love with God if we don't pray? It's just not going to happen, right? We can go through the whole routine of uh, going to Mass, um, you know, reading, studying the faith, and etc., etc. But if we don't communicate with God, if we don't talk to God one-on-one, -on -one, if we don't express our our uh, hearts desires and sentiments to god then we are not building relationships with god there's no relationship our our vocal prayers and our good deeds and our virtues and our um, good practices will will be like talking to a wall right it will be like I don't know how it will be like. It's like it's gonna be like uh, a monologue, because you're just like talking to yourself. You're not communicating with God 
if you do not pray, especially if you do not engage in mental prayer. So I know that, you know, this might be something new for for you, for many of you, but it might be a good chance now after hearing this to start thinking about how we can spend, really spend and invest a few minutes of our day in doing mental prayer. Mental prayer where you don't use any formulations, you don't use the vocal prayers, it's just you speaking with God heart to heart and begin to get to know God. Begin to get to know Jesus more intimately. Begin to talk to Our Lady more intimately or your guardian angel or Saint Joseph. All of them are part of the heavenly host that are there uh, ready to listen to you when you present yourselves to God in prayer. This might be a good chance to think about a portion of your day where you can spend, you know, start with, let's say, 10 minutes. Then let that grow to 15, 20, 30 minutes of your day engaged in mental prayer. It's easy for us to give the excuse, oh, I don't have time, I have so much school work, oh, I have so much things to do, and I have work to do, and I this and that, and I have uh, eight children to mind. <laughs> it's very easy to give excuses, not to pray. But it's just an excuse. It is just an excuse. Because the truth of the matter is, if you love God, and if you want to grow more in love with God, you will find the time to communicate. You will find the time to pray. So like in our own situation, we have a schedule. It's packed with things to do all throughout the day. But, but that is not an excuse for us not to find some portions of that, of that day's busy schedule to devote the prayer. I'll give you an example. If we're only punctual in getting in and out of the house, we would have spent around about 10 minutes perhaps uh, praying at church before we go to Mass. We used to do that with the Adoration Chapel. We can continue to do that now. But now you can designate that time to doing mental prayer. Okay? And we can talk more about how to, how to do mental prayer the method of it and, and everything about it. But today, perhaps, we can begin with a resolution of really finding that time in our day to do 10 minutes or 15 minutes or however much time you think you can devote to personal prayer to God. Personal, personal, mental prayer. Your own portion of your day spent and devoted only to talking to God, following the example of Jesus Christ himself, who went up to the mountain. He separated himself from the troubles of his day, from the daily chores, from the daily grind. He found a place where he could be quietly communicating and praying to God the Father alone. Let's find that time in our day. Let's find that place in our day so that we can all devote a little bit more time communicating with God, getting to know God, and building up that friendship with God. Okay? That's it for us. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a good day. Bye-bye.